Williams, I have, t I have 20 minutes to talk about a topic which I have a great passion. There's so many talks that passed about. I'm going to focus on just this particular issue. You know, this plant everybody is, is getting, it's not a, a bougainvillea or a, a, a rhododendron. It's an, it's an olive tree uh, for peace. And that's, we, we thank very much our friends uh, Giles and Annie Henschel for year after year giving these wonderful trees out to everybody. But I'm very honored to be, to be selected to, to announce the next winner of the Breakaway Award. This is really my favorite award. It's my favorite award because it goes out to, to young talent that we try to encourage and talent that we also believe has something to give us in the future as well. And I think that's certainly evident from previous winners of this. We have, of course, um, just met one over here and also Jane Kenamuk, also a member of that wonderful prestigious award. So keep the, those winners can certainly, I think, look forward to a good future if they follow in their footsteps. But given the, the fact that we had 187 names on this list today of, of colleagues who died in bad circumstances, but died for something they believe in, to inform all of us about what is happening in the world around us, so hope that we would be more informed and can make better decisions. And because of this, I, I'm shocked anytime a young person tells, tells that they want to become a journalist. It's such a dangerous job. It's the most dangerous job, I think, in the world now, probably, statistically. But nevertheless, we have another young person, not quite as young as Gareth, I don't think, but maybe, um, who is, has been engaged for a number of years in, in promoting uh, understanding of the world around us in the Middle East and in Africa as well. His place of, of interest have stretched from Mali to Yemen to Iraq, and the winner is... <laughs> Well, good evening, everyone, and I uh, similarly was unaware that I'd been nominated, so I am both honoured and flabbergasted to have been uh, given this honour, especially on an evening when someone like Iona Craig has been delivered it, who I've been looking up to for years. Um, so it's difficult to know what to say. I think I want to share a story, and given that I am really ad-libbing here, I hope I'm quoting accurately. Um, on the 15th of January last year, uh, it was either the 14th or the 15th, depending on the time zone, I think, uh, the Yemeni journalist al Mikdad Mujali wrote that it's difficult even as a Yemeni not to be desensitized. Every day I go out and I hear that 10 people have been killed, 20, 40, you start to lose your grip on reality. I'm a father living in a war zone but also a journalist. I move my family out of Sana'a away from the bombing uh, so I don't get to see my son as much as I would like. When I see him, he asks me when we can go and play in the park again. And I always tell him the same thing, when the war ends. Now, al Mikdad died on the 17th. A uh, coalition airstrike hit his car. And like so many people in uh, the myriad of journalists that are local and our colleagues who facilitate what we do, he lost his life. But the question he posed, when the war will end, is something that I think we often lose sight of as journalists. We get caught up in the immediate issues, the breaking news, the latest disaster. And very often, as uh, Michael Knight would put it, we get obsessed with what goes wrong. It's very easy as an analyst to predict what will go wrong in a conflict, everything. The trick is being able to establish what will work, what will go right, 
because there are far fewer of them, and those things will probably dictate the future of that country. And so if there's anything that I, that I uh, have tried to achieve in the last few years in reporting in Mali, on Yemen, and in Iraq, it's trying to see beyond the immediate conflict, beyond Mosul, uh, beyond the fall of Timbuktu and the fighting around Mopti, to establish what institutions and what beliefs are likely to emerge from that conflict to be organizing principles for that society. Um, and so I think that as journalists, we really have to try and look not just at the bad, but at the good. Um, and I hope that that is something that we can continue to do moving forward and that there's much more of it to go around. So thank you very much, everyone.